third act of quotations. Again, this is much shorter than the first act. That was way, way long. Um, this only has about six, seven quotations to go through. Here we go. So in Act 3, Scene 2, we have Macbeth orders the murder of Banquo and Fleance with the murderers. And then Lady Macbeth comes in and tries to question him about what he's doing. And we've now seen a turn in the uh, dominance and uh, submission within their marriage. Macbeth has now become the dominant and more murderous and more violent and bloodthirsty character out of the two. And one of the quotations he says is, Oh, full of scorpions is my mind, dear wife. Um, and obviously, uh, <clears throat> for a start, um, it's an animalistic imagery here, scorpions. Um, he doesn't actually mean his mind's got scorpions in it, but it's a metaphor, animalistic metaphor. But also it's monosyllabic apart from scorpions, therefore emphasising that um, uh, quite dark uh, imagery. So the animalistic metaphor highlights the corruption of Macbeth's mind by his murderous thoughts. Okay. Um, the social context you'd relate this to is either to the regicide, the idea of killing the king being such a sin and how much that's now taken him over, and also the gender divide between the two, the fact that uh, now um, perhaps uh, he's in charge. He's patronising over the idea of dear wife. Okay? Then if we look at the other quotation I've chosen from this scene, actually there's one more after this, but this is, this is a really important one. He says to be innocent of the knowledge, dearest Chuck. And it's that phrase, dearest Chuck. The idea that um, it, it's the patronising term, dearest Chuck, shows the audience how Macbeth has now become the dominant partner in the marriage. He's now patronising his wife. You don't need to worry about that. Um, and this fits, again, if you want to put the social context in, this is also the gender roles expected within Jacobean society, that the man would be expected to take charge of the relationship and be the dominant one. <coughs> um, and this is a reversal from previously in Act, uh, in Act 1, Scene 7, where Lady Macbeth is very much in charge. The themes this would relate to are, again, gender, power, that sort of idea. And then again, right at the end of the scene, again, this is a really advanced point, but earlier in Act 1 we pointed out a, when Shakespeare normally ends his scene, not always, but he often ends his scenes with a pentameter rhyming couplet. Um, the idea is <coughs> it would end the scene before the scene changed with da 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 And that's the idea. Off we go off stage and we're about to go into the next scene. I mean, he does that again here. Um, so here... Macbeth delivers a conventional rhyming couplet, thou marvellous to my words, but hold thee still. Um, things bad begun make strong themselves by ill. So there we have the rhyming couplet. Uh, but Shakespeare subverts his convention again by adding this six-syllable line. So prithee, go with me. The added instruction echoes the meter of the witches and Lady Macbeth in Act 1, Scene 5, when she ends the scene like that. Um, and it emphasises Macbeth's um, embracing or acceptance of the witch's evil and also that he's taking control of the situation. The themes this may relate to are gender, power, occult, gothic and the social context again fits with that whole like, gender idea of uh, him now taking control but also the occult that he now seems to be echoing that same rhythm of language that the witches and Lady Macbeth has exhibited. Okay, in Act, three, in Act 3, Scene 3, we have the murderers try and murder Banquo and Flounce, but unfortunately they only manage to murder Banquo and leaving Macbeth, knowing that Flounce is still alive and therefore can fulfil the witch's prophecy of being a child of Banquo that becomes king. Anyway, in Act 3, Scene 4, he has a big banquet and he sees the ghost of Banquo. And after the whole trauma of seeing the ghost twice and making it obvious that he's hallucinating something disturbing and suggesting he may have been involved in the murders previously. Uh, Lady Macbeth dismisses uh, the other nobles 
And then when Macbeth is talking just to Lady Macbeth, he says this line, it will have blood. They say blood will have blood. Now, the monosyllabic statement here and the repetition of blood three times, remember three is the magic number, um, it emphasises Macbeth's realisation and almost acceptance that their murderous actions are going to bring murderous repercussions back on them. And this again relates to earlier, like I was saying, the idea of how the Shakespearean audience would understand <clears throat> that James I's view of the divine right of kings suggests that kings were set there by God, and Macbeth realises his sin is too far to be redeemed. Also, there's the idea of fate, um, the idea that there's nothing you can do now. This is now set out to play out. So the themes here are fate, violence, power, and the Gothic. And finally, at the end of the scene, yet again, we have this last time that instead of the rhyming couplet, we have this extra six-syllable line added on the end of the, the, the last speech in the scene. So Macbeth says, as they end the scene, Come, will to sleep, my strange and self-abuse is the initiate fear that wants hard use. Now that should normally be the end of the scene. It's the rhyming couplet, the strict pentameter that we see there. Um, and then again, Shakespeare adds on this uh, last six-syllable line. We are yet but young indeed. It's actually seven syllables. You could blur the indeed. But again, the witches have been talking six and si seven-syllable lines the whole time. And the monosyllabic sentence is an instruction that's ominous and it suggests far more violence is yet to come, as well as echoing the witches and Lady Macbeth from earlier. It emphasises how Macbeth's mind has now been corrupted fully by the witches' evil. Um, <clears throat> again, this links to the idea of killing a king, regicide. It links to um, the idea of the occult and him being possessed by the witchcraft that he's witnessed. And the themes it involves are fate, violence, power, occult, and the Gothic. Okay, that's the end of the Act 3 one. There is no Act 4, and I haven't chosen any quotations for Act 4. You may choose to choose some yourselves. Um, but the next short film is Act 5. Okay, thanks a lot. Cheers. Cheers.